As the sole heir to the throne of Demacia, Prince Jarvan carries the weight of his lineage. Brought up to embody the highest virtues of his nation, he must navigate the immense expectations that accompany his title while yearning to demonstrate his own prowess on the battlefield. A formidable warrior, Jarvan instills his soldiers with unwavering bravery and altruistic resolve, proudly bearing his family's banner and showcasing the qualities of a future leader destined to guide his people. Greetings lore lovers, welcome back to Lion Drag your go-to channel for deep dives into the rich tapestry of Runeterra's stories. Today we delve into the saga of Jarvan IV, scion of Demacia's prestigious Light Shield lineage. From battles against Naxos to alliances with unexpected allies, Jarvan's journey is a tale of valor, friendship and the burdens of royalty. Join us as we uncover the pivotal moments that shaped this noble warrior's path to the throne. Not long after King Jarvan III ascended to the throne, he addressed the people of Demacia with a vision for unity. Despite the lingering threats beyond their kingdom's borders, internal strife among noble families had begun to brew, with some even forming private militias to curry favor with their new ruler. King Jarvan would not tolerate such dangerous rivalries. To put an end to the feuding, he announced his intention to marry Lady Catherine, a beloved figure among the people. Courtly whispers had long suggested a hidden affection between the two. As the bells of the great city tolled for a full day and night in celebration, it was soon revealed by year's end that the royal couple were expecting their first child. However, their joy turned to sorrow when Catherine tragically died during childbirth. The newborn, named after his father's lineage, was proclaimed heir, apparent to the throne of Demacia. Struggling between his grief and newfound hope, Jarvan III vowed never to remarry, dedicating all his aspirations and dreams for the kingdom's future to his son. With no recollection of his mother, young Prince Jarvan was brought up within the confines of the court meticulously groomed and constantly guarded. The king ensured he received the finest education Demacia could offer, imparting lessons on the moral value of charity, the solemn responsibility of duty, and the honor in serving one's people. As he matured, Jarvan was also introduced to the complex history and politics of Valoran by his father Senechal Sinchao. This loyal guardian from decent Ionia instilled in the prince the world's spiritual philosophies alongside the diverse arts of war. During his military training, Prince Jarvan encountered a bold youth from the Kraunger family named Geren. Close in age, the two quickly formed a strong bond. Jarvan admired Geren's unwavering determination and resilience, while Geren respected the prince's strategic acumen. When Jarvan reached maturity, his father bestowed upon him the honorary rank of general. Though it was not customary for the heir to the throne to engage in direct combat, Jarvan was resolute in his desire to prove his mettle with or without the king's consent. The lands beyond the Argent Mountains had long been a battleground with the Naxian Empire, a nearly lawless frontier where foreign marauders and warring tribes posed a threat to many of Demacia's allies. The prince vowed to restore stability to the region. Years ago, his great-grandfather had been slain by a vile Naxian brute in the initial clashes between their nations in the south. Now Jarvan intended to avenge that insult. Jarvan's forces achieved victory after victory, but the devastation he witnessed in the outlying towns weighed heavily on him. Upon hearing that the gates of mourning had fallen, he resolved to press onward into Naxian territory, disregarding the counsel of his lieutenants. Predictably, with his battalion stretched to thin, Jarvan was eventually surrounded and defeated by Naxian warbands before he could reach Trivail. Refusing to surrender, Prince Jarvan and a handful of survivors fled into the dense forests, relentlessly pursued by enemy scouts for days. Eventually, with an arrow lodged in his side, Jarvan collapsed between the shade of a fallen tree, drifting in and out of consciousness. He was consumed by despair, feeling he had failed his family, his kingdom and his comrades. Undoubtedly, he would have perished there, alone, if not for Shivana. This mysterious woman with violet skin somehow managed to carry Jarvan all the way back to Demacia, to the old castle at Renwall. There she proved to be a kind and steadfast companion during his recovery. Initially startled by her unusual appearance, 
the garrison commander could not overlook the immense service she had rendered to the throne by saving Jarvan's life. Unfortunately, Shivana was being pursued by a monstrous elemental dragon named Eva. When the castle's watchmen spotted the beast on the horizon, Jarvan saw an opportunity for redemption. As Shivana prepared to confront the dragon in her half-dragon form, the prince, despite his injuries, rose from his bed to rally the garrison and fortify the walls. He grasped his lance and vowed they would return to the great city with Eva's head or not at all. The battle was swift and deadly. When his men faltered in fear, it was Jarvan who rallied them. When they were wounded, it was Jarvan who directed the healers to their aid. Though the fell creature was ultimately slain by Shivana, it was the prince's leadership that had held the line. In that moment, Jarvan witnessed the true strength of the Demacian people, standing united in defense of their homeland, regardless of their differences or doubts. He promised Shivana that she would always have a place among his guards, should she choose to accept it. With the dragon's skull in tow, Jarvan returned to his father's court in triumph, Shivana by his side. While the king was overwhelmed with emotion at his son's safe return, some of the assembled nobles quietly questioned the wisdom of allowing such a creature to stand with the prince, let alone serve as one of his protectors. Despite the murmurs of dissent, Jarvan resumed his position within the military and took on a significant role in matters of state beyond mere defense of the realm. With his friend Garen now serving as sword captain of the elite Dauntless Vanguard and the king beginning to feel the weight of his years, the prince knew he must prepare himself to one day inherit the throne and be crowned King Jarvan IV of Demacia. Let's now see about his relations with other champions. Jarvan III Lightshield, the father of Jarvan IV, was the former king of Demacia. His lineage can be traced back to his great-grandfather Jarvan I, the first king of Demacia, who was killed by Sion during a decisive battle against Naxos. Xin Zhao, who Jarvan IV regards as an uncle, played a significant role in his upbringing and training. Silas of Dragborn posed a threat to Demacia, according to Jarvan, seeking to overthrow and kill its elite, including Jarvan IV. Jarvan IV narrowly escaped execution by Silas and now pursues him, believing Silas is responsible for his father's death, though the king was already dead when he was found. The grave error Jarvan IV committed is not seen through this rebellion. He just acted like the rebels are only wishing to overthrow the ruling family and destroy Demacia's institutions, but this was not the case at all. Mages were so oppressed in Demacia, just because of their innate talent and the obsession of Demacia's founders to keep this place magic free. This whole anti-magic thing came as a response after the Rune Wars, where people got to see horrible things done by magic users. Some of the survivors stumbled across a forest that seemed to cancel all magic abilities and so they founded what is now known as Demacia. The big problem is that their wish to keep magic out of their kingdom lost control and they started to imprison and punish every magic user no matter their actions. And so, Silas of Dragborn got to see all these unfair treatments. He was initially one of the mage seekers, but after one incident where he tried to protect a girl and unintentionally killed his supervisor, Silas was imprisoned from a young age, his only alienation being Lux, whose power he used to escape and provoke this rebellion. In the end, Jarvan came to his senses and finally freed all remaining prisoners while slowly starting to turn Demacia to magic tolerance. Garen Kramgard has been a close friend of Jarvan IV since their youth, having trained and served together in the military. Shivana saved Jarvan IV after he fled from a perilous situation. Later, Jarvan helped her slay her mother, earning her a place in the Demacian elite guard. It was revealed that Jarvan loved someone who was not so different from the mages, and this person was Shivana. Luxana Kramgard, known as Lux, was arranged to marry Jarvan IV by her family to shield her from persecution due to her abilities as a mage. As queen, her position would have made accusations against her more difficult. However, Lux did not appear for the betrothal ceremony, seemingly putting an end to the arrangement. After the death of his father, King Jarvan III, Jarvan IV sought counsel from many prominent nobles, including Geron's aunt, High Marshal Tiana Krangard. Tiana's guidance was crucial in preparing Jarvan IV for his future role as King of Demacia. 
And there you have it, the epic tale of Jarvan the Fourth. If you enjoyed this journey through Demacia's history, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to Lion Drag for more deep dives into the lore of League of Legends. Connect with us on Discord for more discussions and lore chats. Until next time, may the stories of Runeterra continue to inspire and captivate you. Thank you for watching.